This is Drink Talk, where we try to solve the world's problems one drink at a time. Each week in this podcast, the topics of today and tomorrow are discussed while we sample some of the finest libations known to man. Join us. We are your hosts, Brian and Britt. Check us out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live here at the Inkwell Studio here in Omaha. Yeah, you guys got your we got a little mini studio in your right. bar now, right? Exactly. Cool. First time for that. I think first, it's first time. time yeah. yeah, and we were joined by uh, the owners uh, Tyler and John here, and uh, we, we do have a patron back here. We got a patron hanging <laughs> out. Want to say hey? That's right, right on. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about the bar here? How uh, how long have you been open, Tyler? We've been here about a year and a half now, since uh, early May 2017. And you specialize in craft cocktails, pretty much anything you want to drink. We'll do it from Bush Light for three dollars, or the fanciest cocktail you can come up with, and we'll put a price on it. Right, <laughs> and uh, your nice. cocktails are great here. They are. They are fantastic. I've been coming here for a while, and I've always enjoyed everything I've had here so far. So. Um, what are you? And you're making one right now, actually. So why don't we, uh, why don't we talk right. a little bit about that too? So we are making four cocktails for this podcast today. Um, each one of them with some form of a Halloween theme, if you will, or a fear theme. Um, this one we're doing here is called a Sangre and Sand. It's based off the classic cocktail, much maligned in the cocktail industry, known as the Blood and Sand. Um, originally, the Blood and Sand was created in 1920, I believe 1922, um, named after the movie by the same name, which was Blood and Sand, um, a bullfighting movie. Oh. Uh, the idea is the blood went into the sand in the arena. Nice. Um, never seen it. I have no idea what it's about. I've had the cocktail, which is usually done with um, a scotch, orange juice, cherry hearing, and sweet vermouth. Nice. Any particular scotch that you use? Um, when I do it, I try to find something as lit with uh, as uh, less offensive as possible. So not peated scotch. Not, not super an island. peated. No, <laughs> no. Um, so what we've done here is switched out the scotch for a mezcal. Now the original cocktail calls for equal parts. Um, and one reason this cocktail is much maligned in the bartending community is it's extremely juicy. Um, if you work with orange juice, you'll find that it can uh, sometimes overpower a drink and you end up with a uh, smoky screwdriver. Oh. So we've uh, upped the mezcal, brought down the uh, sweet vermouth and orange juice, and then instead of cherry hearing, which last I checked actually isn't on the market in Nebraska right now, uh, we're using our house-made um, grenadine, which is a pomegranate base. Oh. Make your own grenadine. Yeah. Here. There you yeah. go. Up yeah, top. Real, awesome. Awesome. real fancy. Presentation is amazing. Uh, yeah. I, I take this as the orange orange peel here. There's a little bit of an orange peel there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Didn't zest it over the top like I do with some cocktails because, once again, I don't want too much orange. I like that smoke coming through a little bit more with this one. Mm-hmm. Sure. A uh, little balance. sweet, a little yeah. smoky, little juicy. All right. Let well, we'll try that. Exactly. Give it a go. Much clinky clink. There you go. That way they know you're actually drinking it if they're not watching it. Exactly. Ooh, ooh! Uh, oh, I, wow. I, 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 sm- I taste the smokiness inside of this. Yeah. Um, so the uh, mezcal I use is known as Del Maguey Vita. Um, it's probably one of the more accessible, widely spread of the Del Maguey mezcal brands. Um, I believe it comes in around twenty-eight or thirty a bottle. Um, oh, that's so great. It's, it's not crazy expensive. It's easy to cocktail with. Uh, Del Maguey means of the Maguey. Uh, Maguey is a type of uh, agave, agave yep. plant, oh, okay. so hence the name. Um, I almost taste like a which cinnamon tequila in here. is made from agave. Well, exactly. Cinnamon. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, but, I, yeah. I, I like the balance on this. Like uh, I've had smoky drinks before, where it just it's smoke. Just all smoke. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. It's no. like booze and smoke. That's yeah. all. You, it's a light flavored smoke. Yeah. Um, and you know something I'm doing with uh, the four cocktails we're having today is all of them are going to be. A tad bit sweet, or on the sweeter side, just to kind of tie it into our candy and trick or treating. Yep. Um, so we're not doing anything, you know, super spirit forward or super um, boozy. Boozy yeah. and bitter. yeah, this is pretty. This is sweet, not not overly sweet. No, no, but it no, is sweet. Yeah. Um, before we really delve into kind of the talk, I, I guess we should bring up where specifically 
the bar is located. So in case people don't know where, <laughs> where yeah. you're located. We Over should, the interwebs. Uh, yeah, on the interwebs. Uh, 87th and Pacific. Uh, you're on the frontage road right along Pacific. Yeah, and, right uh, across from Westside. If, right if across from Westside. We're, we're, we're in a small village in the city, I believe they call a small it. Town a small, small town, town small in the town, city. Yeah. I'm still yeah. learning. That's, a, <laughs> that's all right. Countryside village. There you go. <laughs> How did you uh, come up with the idea for opening a bar and why here? Um... Well, the idea of opening a bar uh, has been a long-discussed uh, topic between me and my brother and two of our other partners back home in L.A. Um, I guess I have been behind bars since I was a kid in college, so I think I'm about 11 or 12 years now um, throughout Iowa, where I started, uh, then Miami, then Los Angeles. Man, uh, both coasts. Both, All right. Yeah, I got both coasts. My brother was in New York and then came out to L.A. and we worked together in L.A. Thanks for, for a joining while. us, John. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm here. No, <laughs> he's, he's present. Here. Yeah. He's, he's here. Good. Good. No, he came with me. Um, and while working in Los Angeles at a uh, little craft cocktail bar known as the Roger Room, if any Roger Room people are out there listening, um, I know Damien's working tonight, so he's not. Boyd's watching. Um, so Boyd's there watching. Go. There you go. We got that going for us. Um, <laughs> While working at the Roger Room, me and my brother were there. Um, the individual that kind of created the cocktail list there, uh, Damien Windsor. Um, of Windsor and Coke. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> of Windsor Canadian Whiskey. Yeah, there oh, you go. Okay. Um, All right. yeah. Not really. Not no, really. No, 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 not so much. Uh, not that either. I can't back that He up. came back after a hiatus from there, starting other projects, and, uh, you know, how bar work goes. You know, 2 a.m. comes, we close down, we're cleaning up, we're having a shift drink, and we started spitballing ideas, and... Before we knew it, we knew we uh, all liked hanging out and working together, so we wanted to start a project. So we started the wheel turning in LA, and as I'm sure you can imagine, it is uh, has quite a few obstacles if you're going to try and open a bar. The wheel turning now. The wheel We're turning. Scheming. Scheming. Thinking oh, yes. about it, ah. right? Yeah. The gears plans, right. Yeah. Yeah. presenting yeah. it to investors, trying to find a location. So LA. It's right, also a bit more expensive than a Omaha. bit more expensive and a it's bit one way to more. Say it. Um, what do I want to say? Uh, locked tight. Um, only, more, more red tape. Only there. so many liquor licenses are given. Liquor oh, licenses really? are given out a year. Uh, okay. Sure. And is that the, countywide or is that it just citywide? Um, as far as I remember, statewide? it was pretty much statewide. Wow. Um, well, I could be on do wrong. They do, they do that in Nebraska too, right? Not so no, much. They just, yeah, they just they just they pre- it seems like you pretty much can <laughs> get it. So a, or per capita. Like, yeah. I mean, okay. It, we, we don't need 112 bars right, in a right, town yeah, of 100 people. Just 110. You have to present yourself, but. So the other option you have there, which I don't believe you can do here, is you can go buy someone else's if you know they're going out of business. Gotcha. So oh, that's, well, that's nice. Transferable. Wheel. Correct. Grandfather um, law, yeah. Yeah, transferable with a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, is that um, all? Just, yeah, just the hundred thousand. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. So we, you know. So you got two licenses then, right? Just, right. Just yeah. for a backup. So the first, the first, <laughs> the first obstacle, obviously, was trying to find someone at a spot we wanted that was going out of business that would sell it to us and. Long story short, we turned our wheels for a couple of years trying to get it off the ground. Sure. Um, As you do in business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had an idea, but we couldn't quite come to fruition. So my father, who is actually moving away from Omaha, but had moved here about a year Is that how earlier. you got tied into Omaha? Correct. Okay. He uh, came and sat down and had lunch with me and my brother one afternoon in L.A., and he said, you know, have you ever thought about trying this in Omaha? And I said, of course not. Uh, you don't have much competition. I, I, I don't know. Well, coming from L.A., you're yeah, probably like, like, what's in it, Omaha? It, it never, it never Why crossed, would I it stand didn't cross right. my yeah. mind. Um, yeah, right. That being said, you know, as I said, I started bartending in Iowa. I went to college at Grinnell College out there, so I wasn't unfamiliar with the Midwest. And right. I'd driven through Omaha, but I never stopped here before. Yeah. Sure. A nice 8680 corridor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we came out and visited. Uh, my brother came out first. Um, and then me and Damien came out a little while afterwards and checked out the scene and looked around and said, all right, this will work. Did Countryside Village, was that um, something that you sought out or was it just a timing thing and um, something was open? It was a timing thing. Essentially, yeah, sure. the bar as you see it now was already here. Oh, really? Um, the barbershop, which you can see where we're connected to, Dennis and Dahlman Barbershop, um, had their own lounge here at the time. And... Around the time we decided to look around, we went on the interwebs and found, you know, looked at bars that were for sale. You know, the sure, great, sure. great thing of the 21st century is you can go online and figure that out before you come out here. Did they just, did they hire, did the 
uh, Dennis and Delman, did they just have a bartender on staff and yeah, yeah I think so I mean I think they more of a, a few. you want to get a haircut and you, you want well, to no, sip right, on yeah. some scotch or yeah, something yeah I mean they were trying I think it was trying to be branded as its own thing I think that's part of why they decided to kind of let someone else come in so that that could actually happen because I feel like an obstacle they ran into was people did put because it, it was Dennis and Dahlman and Dennis and Dahlman Lounge so gotcha. much like that is that what that's so that's what they have it was two called. separate signs on um, apparently right they didn't for the longest time and like a month before we decided to put our LOI in they just put something on that is just like two D's up there to yeah. mark it double D <laughs> yeah right the double D, D. yeah, yeah. Um, the, has the passage been all the through all the way the for the whole time that's been there the whole time. Yeah. Okay. So they, they built it out like that, and gotcha. uh, we've decided to keep it that way and continue one of the things they obviously it's did. It's kind of neat because really, because yeah. there's technically three businesses. Three of us together. Well, now, yeah. yeah, yeah. Since and Boyd's still watching, so uh, yeah, we got Boyd yeah. over there at the yeah. Simple Man, yeah, the Simple we'll Man shoot, store. Shout out. Yeah, oh, where I get yeah. all my apparel. Yeah, very um, nice. There you go. My hat here that fits over my ear. He earphones. does have some nice new hats. Uh, yeah, he does. And some chuckas. I saw some of the, the new shoes that he's got there. Those are nice. Oh, what? Oh yeah, yeah. I did yeah. see the shoes. I nice. almost I almost wore my Simple Man shirt today, but I thought that'd be overkill. And <laughs> it'd, just, it'd just be too much about him and not enough about the bar. <laughs> yeah. Um, Don't worry, Boyd. We can we can go live from your place too. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can drink. In there. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. He's got that uh, uh, root beer, or not root? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's root, got a, root, a root beer for the cause from uh, Infusion Brewery. Does that for them? So uh, I believe it's a five dollar donation to pour a cup in there. No, it's not alcoholic root beer. Not alcohol. Nope, no, nope, okay. nope. I was going to say Infusion's more of a beer company. They are. They are. Yeah, but I guess uh, they, you know, they Expanding. floated the idea to them. And they said, mm-hmm. "Yeah, we'd love to, you know, put some flavors together and." Nice. And, and you make your beer. own ginger beer here. We do make our own ginger beer. Um, also non-alcoholic, but uh, the problem we have found, um, me and my brother and my partner specifically, so Damien and Michael, to speak to them real quick, you know, each have probably been in this business 25 years apiece. You know, they've done bars in New York, they, there's one in Houston, bars in L.A., so uh, they were kind of our mentors into uh, really delving into craft cocktails. Um but yeah, the problem with the ginger beer we find out of the can, take your goslings and such, is it, it just doesn't have enough, uh, say, oomph or spice to it to st- uh, stand up to whatever spirit, say a Moscow Mule. It won't sure. stand up to the vodka. You always, are, I was always having to add, you know, some more fresh squeezed ginger in there to actually give it some bite. So yeah, and it does have some bite, but does, not, does. not overkill. No, no, but I mean, I always say it's something you probably want to cut with alcohol. Right. Yeah, it's not something you're going to want to drink. You don't want to drink it yeah. straight, yeah. Yeah, you want to cut it with alcohol. Um, gotcha. So, yeah, we make a syrup for that with some uh, jalapeno, cinnamon, vanilla, and some nutmeg or sugar and water. Oh, sounds great. Yeah, yeah. And then ginger, lime, and then we throw it on tap. And you also have the infused vodka over there. Yeah, we got our, our our vodka and veggies, as I call it, for our, <laughs> our dirty Mary. So it's healthy. Mary. It's a healthy drink. Yeah. yeah. That one's a shout out to uh, E.T. back on the on the West Coast. I believe he's the lead brand ambassador for Jack Daniels right now. It's his dirty Mary that he created. So that one it's is... It's got a little bit of a kick to it. It's got some kick to it. That comes from the... Uh, the mix we make ourselves too that's got a bunch of horseradish and tabasco and the next time i come in here i'm now we're, we're like moscow mule oh, yeah. like bloody mary's i'm like man i need to start well, I mean, you, my you, game you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're an old-fashioned guy from what i remember i'm the yeah. old-fashioned yeah. guy yeah. oh he no he yeah all right yeah he's Is there, do you out. have a favorite drink that uh, you like to make the way i always answer this question is or you know i guess the way any bartender would ever answer this question is um First off, a beer and a shot. Um, oh, yeah, because a shot wrong. takes you, uh, what, th- yeah. three seconds yeah, yeah, to yeah, make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great profit margin. Yeah, $2, there. thank you. Um, but, you know, when it comes to making cocktails, there's really, you know, only three ways. And the rest is just putting liquid into it. So you're either shaking, stirring, or building. Um, so essentially, you're asking me, do I like to shake, do I like to stir, or do I like to just put juice in a glass? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, always. The answer, always. The, always. The answer is I like to shake and stir at the same I mean, time. I first it's like question rubbing your is, head. do you have money? Oh, yeah, then, yeah, there we go. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Nice. So. Yeah, so at the end of the day, yeah, I like to shake and stir, you know, it makes me feel accomplished in life, I is, suppose. Is there a drink here that tends to be a little more popular that people order here? Old fashioned, all day, Old every day. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's, uh, that's, I think that's a lot of bars, really. Yeah. Um, it seems to be a staple drink. But you got to get it right. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, there's no messing it up. Uh, no, I mean, the, we. Uh, you could make it too sweet. You oh, could yeah. make, not make it sweet enough. Yeah, I mean, you could make it a fruit salad, you know. You could. We like to we like to be very simple with ours, you know, just 
sticking to the bases with a, the sugar cube bitters, a little bit of soda water to bind that sugar, and then some bourbon, a little bit of lemon and orange over the top to take the nose off a bit and give you something good to smell. Well, and, it's all about starting with good alcohol. Right. Yes. Well, I mean, a good old-fashioned, you know. It, and that's the thing the about... The foundation cocktails. of any good drink. Speaking of that, I, I might be able to zoom into that cabinet over there. But, yeah. Yeah, man, they got a lot of good stuff over there. Well, the, and the less ingredients you have in a cocktail, the harder it can become because balance yeah uh, the, you know exactly. any little mistake will actually come through if i have something with six different spirits in it or you know six different ingredients mm-hmm. i can get away being half off with my simple syrup right but when it comes to something that's essentially at its base you know three ingredients gotta be pretty spot on you dash too many bitters you go twice as much bitters it's mm-hmm. gonna come through sure so i remember the the first craft cocktail i ever ordered was down at lot two down at benson which I don't think rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. I believe it's gone now. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. And I ordered the drink, and I was there with a buddy of mine. He ordered just a regular cocktail, and like he gets his, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. It was like ten minutes. I'm like, they mm. forgot my drink, and so I asked the bartender. I was like, hey, uh, what's going on with the drink there? He's like, uh, still making it. Still, still I was getting like, that Aya nude out holy, of that nude over there. Yeah, he's there. like, there's 14 ingredients of this thing. Yeah. I was like, holy buckets. All right, okay, so. I waited, and it was delicious. Yeah. So. Well, that's one thing we kind of believe in here, um, and that Damien and Michael really taught us as we are taught us throughout our time with them, and still today is we believe in good quality drinks, but we also believe in speed and efficiency. So, sure. You know, it's uh, you can get the best drink in the world, but if it takes twenty five minutes, it's going to kind of ruin that experience. Well, true. It's, it's it's all about prepping beforehand. You know, you, yeah, you've true, got yeah. the ginger beer on tap. You know, you're not behind the bar making the ginger beer. Essentially, it's all about the prep work. It's the sous chef. You know, right. you, you want to get it all prepped and ready for the chef to create his and it, masterpiece. And it's cool. Some, I mean, that's like something you maybe do once every six months. Go to a place where it might take twenty minutes, but it's a show. But somewhere you want to go twice a week, <laughs> you want to make sure you can get in there and within. 90 seconds to three minutes you have a refreshment a in hand. often we see them walking through the class windows and we're like all right we know what they want Let's get started <laughs> already on this. Yeah. Uh, so you do have some like uh classic regulars here oh, so you're yeah. telling me you judge people as they walk in the door no, <laughs> he looks only like in the best way <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, only yeah, the people best we've way. never <laughs> seen before and if, if they don't want it we'll just you know have it so it's a it's a win-win right right yeah exactly how did you end up coming up with the name Inkwell? Because honestly, when I first, when Boyd sent me here for the first time, he was the first person to kind of introduce me to this place. I was like, I That's thought it was tattoo a shop? tattoo parlor. Yeah, yeah we'll absolutely. Get that. We'll get so, that. but uh, the the. The more I learned about this place, I was like, "That's actually really cool." So I'm yeah. saying, "What you talk about?" There was a little? story about this place, what it was before. Well, he hmm. just talked about that, but the Inkwell name and, no, and what it means. Well, no, 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 yeah, it was, but I thought it was something way back in the day, way um, before it was a barber shop slash. I I mean nothing to do with the Inkwell name per no. se. Um, I know the barber. Oh, shop. You're, I think you're Dennis and Dahlman right now. They have the the Dennis and Dahlman politician and uh, like what, mob right, boss yeah. connection. I don't know if there's any true connection there. If they just thought it was a cool story of Omaha and kind of spoke to that, have a glass of whiskey and get a classic shave idea. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, the uh, our name Inkwell um, goes back to our uh, to our father, uh, Glenn Schaefer, um, who went to the Iowa's Writers Workshop in uh, Iowa City. Um, and has had a writing career, still writes today. Um, and since he was the one that inspired us to come to Omaha, you know, if we wouldn't even considered it without him. Sure. We thought it'd be a good uh, homage to him. Plus, every writer on that wall over there was uh, some kind of alcoholic at some point in their career. <laughs> if not Ernest the Hemingway has to be up there then. Uh, most of them are probably dead yeah. from uh, alcoholism. So I actually love his quote about writing, and it's uh, right drunk. It's sober. sober, yeah. Yeah. Well, the quote we have in the back is, "I uh, I drink to make other people more interested." <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I actually have at home. Um, I have two girls, and I have a little desk for them, and the desk actually has a inkwell in it. Mm. It was one that we had <laughs> interesting growing up as a kid. But it was <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, oh, we got not, two over there. Not nice. that we're yeah, very cool from my grandmother actually. Very. Oh, can you, I don't know. Can you zoom in on that? Yeah, kind he's, of dirty. I want to get he's got, a, he's got a new toy with that camera, so All he right. likes to he's play with it. And, yeah, he's zoomed I, in. On I know how that is. Like, I you know, put up a new camera the other day, too, and I like to zoom in on things. and I can talk through it, so if like he's back here alone... What or, are you doing? Yeah, just get to work. Try to mess with them. Yep. That's your um, second shot today. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my way in. Yeah. All right. Well, let's... Uh, 
Is there anything else that you want to talk about with the bar before we get really into the talk a little bit? No, I mean... Again, 87th and Pacific. 87th Pacific, you know. Countryside Village. You want a drink? We'll make it. This place has really seen a turnaround in the last few years. I might as well throw the logo up there, you know. There you go. Just do that. Um, I have a logo. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just took hey, a, I took inkle. a picture of your inkwell card. Oh, look at that! Oh, Boom. Okay, yeah. 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 Done. Yeah. Someone finally did it after a year and a half. Well, we did. Uh, ultimately, we do want to talk about fear on this episode, but uh, I think before we get into that, we should talk about what's coming up here on Wednesday, which is Halloween oh, okay. or All oh, Hallows Eve. Ghouls and goblins. Uh, All <laughs> Saints <laughs> Eve. So. <laughs> Uh, Tyler and I did a little research earlier. I think we did the same. We looked at the same Wikipedia the, page. The same right, Wikipedia yeah. page, yeah. yeah. Um, from what I could gather, uh, Halloween's kind of been uh, in the United States since the Irish and Scottish immigrants had came in, but it really didn't gain mainstream status here in the States until like the first 10 years in the 1900s, so 1900 and 1910. My question is, why do I have to spend my hard-earned money on all these kids that come around and give them free candy? I'll tell you why. I'll, t- I'll tell you exactly why. Because right. in, in Scotland and, uh, you know, those areas over there when they do this uh well, it's in, the, it's in the name, trick or treat. Right, right. right. But, but I'm going to pull that card. Just I'm do gonna, a trick every time. And yeah, you're good. exactly. <laughs> originally, they would dress up as the spirits that were, they were afraid of and go house to house singing, you know, songs. And then what people would do was give them can- or food originally. And that would be like giving that spirit food so that oh. spirit would not haunt you. It's like a pay for play. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's either give me a treat or yeah. this trick will be played by this spirit. Sure. Give me a king size bar. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. We all know where that's at. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Hey, I was just going to give a little shout out to JW that's uh, that's walk- watching actually. Okay. JW. Hey, Jay. What's up, buddy? <laughs> just a little shout out. Yep. But uh, yeah, no, I I, I kind of have a sore spot uh, with with Halloween. Uh, I've got a neighbor, two houses down, and like if you looked up where to go in Omaha to check out where to go for Halloween, like we were on the map. He two two houses down. He, I mean, you wouldn't know it driving by it day to day, uh, but like the day of Halloween, he max prep. It's like six in the morning. He's out there prepping. He stands out in his driveway and he's uh, electrifying a human being. Like he's got gadgets and gizmos and knobs and all that stuff. Unfortunately, so barbecue. He's like he's got some of the weirdest decorations I've ever seen in my entire life. But they're it's just neat. It's it was it was like a going to a theme park, you know. And it was right two doors down for me. And unfortunately, he passed away um, about a month ago. Electrocuting people? No. <laughs> It went no. wrong. No. He crossed, he crossed well, the wires. He, he right? was he was a. a it was his final trick. He was a guy of like um, electricity, so I, I wouldn't say that he's an electrician, but he liked dabbling in that sort of he stuff. Was, he was a man of electricity. A man of um, anyway, electric personality. He had all these just weird things that you would find in laboratories and and science places, and I'm like, where do you get your hands on this? It's like most people are just throwing this stuff out. Well, so dumpster diving. Yeah. So when when. Uh, when he passed away, his wife came to me and was like, "Hey, I know that we we're trying to live, keep this tradition going. You do, would you want any of his stuff? You know." He's like, "She's like, you can have it all." It's like a guilt trip now. Um, and I'm like, "Well, if you can give me the shed that is in your backyard, then I'll take your stuff because I have no room in the house, right, <laughs> and that's yeah. where he kept all his stuff was mm-hmm. in the shed." And I was like, "Man, you just need to call up like a um, haunted house oh, or something yeah, like that, sure. and you know." Not donated, but I'm sure you can get some money for it. You know, right. like give me, right off yeah, give me a hundred dollars, yeah. or whatever. You know, eight hundred dollars for everything. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, he's uh, that's not going to be around this year. Unfortunately, but I'm sure I'm still going to get enough kids that come by that I'm going to have to go to Costco and buy multiple bags of Costco sized candy. Around well, here. well, don't do it too soon. I've heard you know I haven't had to handle this yet, but I hear horror stories. You know, parents who do it too soon and then eat half of it themselves before Halloween right. comes around. Yeah, no, I, I haven't just, bought it yet. So yeah, yeah. I, I just take it to work. Like right. I, I leave right. the kids some, and then I just take the rest to work. Right, right. guys, get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> You guys have any uh, favorite like Halloween time movies, traditions, or scary movies that or shows that you like watching at all? Yeah. I don't know. It's a tough. I one. mean, we both like The Walking Dead, but I don't know if that's Halloween. That's not Halloween. That's yeah, just good just, television. It's just a right. scary. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> just right. scary. That that so that's what it's I was thinking serious. about yesterday. I was like, if the zombie apocalypse actually happened on Halloween, how long would it take for us to know? Yeah, I mean, 
Probably pretty quick. Probably the you, first you time. You get a lot of points. I'm going to start assuming. <laughs> right. <laughs> there wouldn't be a lot of treats being handed out. There'd be mostly tricks occurring. A lot yeah. of tricks occurring. Not those tricks, but you know. <laughs> the, the eating your face tricks. Yeah, I, exactly. I'm kind of empty here. Kind of empty. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready for number two? I think yeah. so. Ready All right. For number two. I'm what, I'm, what is the next one yeah. then? So. Number two is the infamous death flip. Oh. Now, now I came in the other day, and you were you had a notepad of, of jotting all this stuff down. Yeah, it, it, was this on your normal menu, or you completely so made all this the up? death flip is the only one that is currently on our fall menu. Nice. The other the other three are, I wouldn't say I made them up. Um, one thing I like to do that once again our partners helped teach me back in the day was start with something that already exists. Like we just did the sangre and sand. I kind of took the idea of the blood and sand and. Mm-hmm didn't run too far away from it right um just a little tweak just a little tweak the death flip though in and of itself was created in melbourne at the black pearl um i'm gonna remember his name or i'm gonna look down real quick chris (laughs) heistead yeah chris heistead um thank you for the printout of yeah yeah oh yeah you could have told me uh 2010 um so originally he did this one with a, a tequila base because he apparently loved tequila. It kind of was a big interest to him, the different flavors and stuff with where it'd be done. Um, he loved Jaeger from his time in university, as he would say, mm-hmm. um, and yellow chartreuse just because it, it's such a complex spirit um, and also it's, it's been around uh, yeah, forever. Forever, so, yeah. and it's fun to play. You with. said this is made up with tequila? It's made with tequila, and then to tie it together, it uses an, an entire egg. So, uh, something that kind of uh, triggered me last time on our last show, we were actually with uh, Spirit World, and mm-hmm. Elziri brought a... Uh, El Mayor. El Mayor, but it was a... Barrel uh, aged. Barrel aged. And I was like, so this whiskey's actually pretty good, and he's like, no, that's tequila. I'm like, no, that's whiskey that you just gave me. He's like, no, 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 that's tequila. I'm like, wow! You have changed my mind on how to, you know, drink. Uh, apparently, I like barrel aged tequila. What's not to like? Right. Yeah, What's not yeah. yeah the, like the barrel notes were right up front, and then the tequila you got in the back, uh, in the back. So it was, it was good because uh, I've had, as I think most people have, had have have had bad experiences with tequila. So I have. You have not? No. I said most. I didn't all right, say all. all. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, this death flip. What he he, he challenged himself to do was to create a cocktail with things he enjoyed that everyone else disliked. So as you said, everyone's, you know, had a bad experience with tequila. Right. Most of us have had a bad experience with Jaeger at some point. Uh, Chartreuse, if you're familiar with it, a lot of people in the mixology community are. You can ask my buddy uh, Nick O'Connor back at Cedar and Green Chartreuse from time to time. Uh, We've all had a pretty bad experience with that stuff, too. Um, So he challenged himself to make a cocktail and then the egg to tie it all together. And when he put it on the menu at the Black Pearl, all it said was, you don't want to meet this cocktail in a dark alley. <laughs> Ingredients not listed. Oh. oh. So it, it like had an air so, of mystery and intrigue and the, yeah, to and it? And his point was nice. he was going to make people enjoy these spirits that they say they hate. And then they drink it and go, that's excellent. And then he'd go, well, this is what's in it. And they go, oh, wow. So Amazing. in ours, the tweak I did is uh, I took out the Jaeger because I really just don't like Jaeger at all. No, uh, minus the Jaeger machine behind me. I mean, it has its time. You got to sell it. You, know? you got to sell it. Um, I might have some fun things coming up with that Jaeger machine. I hope the Jaeger guys aren't watching that Jaeger <laughs> right. machine uh, as soon as I finish the Jaeger and my own kind of mixes in there. To each his own. If a customer comes in and wants Jaeger, you've got it for him. You know, of can't. We don't like you know Rumplemints either, but we right. have it. We this might. is this is very interesting. You are literally cracking an egg into our drink. That's, yeah, <laughs> two of them, in fact. I feel like I'm on Rocky, yeah. and I'm making my little protein shake in the morning. Well, my wife made uh, <laughs> eggs and toast and uh, onions and all that stuff for dinner, so I was like, oh, breakfast oh, for go. dinner. So and now breakfast for cocktails. Exactly. Look at so that again. Healthy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, back to the Jaeger conversation. We pulled that out and threw uh, Fernet Branca in there because West Coast. You know, I don't um, since you know. <laughs> Where I like it. Um, I don't know that I've had Fernet, so I've, I'm... He will today. All right. So and you've been missing wh- out. What's what's the difference? What's the major difference? Um, so, I mean, they're both going to be that uh, an black East licorice. black licorice. Yeah. Um, I find Fernet to be far more complex. Um, there is definitely more herbs and botanicals going on in there. Less um, syrupy, less sweet. Less sweet. Yeah, a little more. I, I sometimes describe it to someone as like Jaeger for like 
law-abiding adult citizens. So would it be more like a like a liquefied black licorice? And st- it smells a lot like mouthwash, to oh. be honest. Mm. You, you are selling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite spirit. Is it really? Yep. Wow. I do like absinthe, which is another uh, black licorice. I mean, I guess it is high octane, so. I mean, Fournette's known as a digestive. It's known for its uh, stomach settling qualities. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. Uh, a lot of parts of South America, they drink it with Coke, which is also known. Namely for, Argentina. Yeah, mainly Argentina. Yeah. Chile, too. But. Can you grab me two Georgians? Sure. Um, so, yeah. we uh, So, once again, a little, barely any tweak to a cocktail. So much so that I felt bad renaming it whatsoever. Um, I like the stemware. It's nice. Yeah. Different stemware for different glasses. Well, yeah, I mean... Every glass, every stemware is going to be different if it's going to be different. different. Yeah, it is hey, different. Yeah. Different stemware for different, different drinks. Cocktails. Yeah, there, there we go. go. That's, yeah. I'm excited for this one. Yeah. I'm just excited to try a r- couple raw eggs in my own drink. I don't know that yeah. I've had a, a cocktail with a I mean, if Rocky raw drinks egg in it, it, like, how bad could it be? Exactly. I mean, yeah, right? Maybe I'll be, uh, get some protein or whatever, get some muscles in my life. <laughs> Right. Just chilling the glass with the ice, is that? Yeah, you know, just I, kind of I should have gotten on that before I started yeah. doing the work, but, you know. For the people talking, that may not be watching. So camera, just, yeah. you know, right. microphones. Headphones are kind of a... Yeah, a little bit off the game. Oh, wow. That looks, ri- that looks like a milkshake. It does. Very that frothy. For you. Yeah. Get right up in there. Looks good. Just needs a little nutmeg. I'm excited for this. This is right. gonna be good. You guys, uh, you guys participate in Halloween at all? <coughs> it's been some time for me. Um, we're well, yeah, uh, the bar. we were we yeah. were actually literally talking about that as we walked in. They're like, "Are you gonna do anything for Halloween?" And it's like, "Well, you can come here and drink on Halloween if you want to." Exactly. <laughs> Don't really need to yeah, do I mean, we'll be we'll be open and serving yeah. cocktails on exactly. Halloween. Mm-hmm. It's always a good time. It's just you, you know. have any specials like uh, you show up in a costume and you get you get a crisp high five. Hey, show up in a yeah, show up in a costume. I'll make you a drink and take your money. There you well, go. What was that that you put right on top? Was that nutmeg? <laughs> yeah, fresh ground nu- or grated nutmeg over the top. Oh, that that oh. is so cool. Give you a little a little it's very, nose. Uh, it's kind of a Christmassy. Yeah. So our drink. fall yes. menu will go through January. So mm-hmm. you know. I decided gotcha. to throw this on now because right. it'll still be here for Christmas. Cheers, cheers, cheers. <coughs> oh my gosh. It's almost like a like an eggnog. It's like Exactly, a, yep. That is so cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean yep. you think once again, you know, knowing the ingredients, you'd be like, uh, I'm not so sure. I mean oh you just cracked an egg in my Right, drink. yeah. And put you know, yellow chartreuse and fernet in there, and then tequila. But that is amazing. Yeah. That is once again, I you know credits due to the man down in Melbourne. But Very frothy, right when right when it goes right into your mouth, almost like uh, little tiny, tiny tiny ice cubes, like very very frothy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. very good feel on the tongue. And as you can see, the separation from mm-hmm. the egg white to the egg. I was just looking at that. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, that's cool. Very nice. This is really good. <laughs> yeah. This is a g- very good fall winter. Right. Sure. I, I, I might popular. stop uh, stop listing the ingredients right. myself because I feel like people aren't ordering as much as they need to be. Right. Because they, they're just turned off. Now. Well, uh, from Death Flip. Well, I mean, yeah, that sounds like a serious drink. Right yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you know, if you don't list it and you just you just say Death Flip, people will be like, all right, I'm in. What is it? Yeah. yeah. But I'm yeah. always afraid of no like killing hardcore. a vegan or something, so I want to make sure they know there's an egg in there. Because mm-hmm. then, you know, I don't know if I can get sued that or first something. Biggest fear you know? yeah, so just have that be a byline underneath there, you know, just not vegan compatible. Right. Not vegan friendly. Yeah. That's just that's actually just on the door. Um, no. <laughs> I kid, I kid. I'm, I'm for all, yeah. all nutritional choices in life. Mm-hmm. Now we were. I was in here uh, with a buddy of mine uh, last Thursday, mm-hmm. and you made a coffee drink. What was that? That was an Irish coffee. It was an Irish coffee? <laughs> that was amazing. And you were <laughs> like, "Oh, it's just Folgers coffee. It's like no big deal." But I mean, Maxwell House. Maxwell, oh, Maxwell House. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, let me let me let me get corrected here. Dark French rose. But it was amazing. It was the best coffee. You know, uh, upon. Not we have a, getting we have drunk a drinking coffee, it, yeah. but you know, 
Well, I mean, and the, you bring up the Maxwell House, and it sounds terrible, but to be honest with you, we tried a ton of varieties. Everything from Organic our good, our even, good yeah, neighbors yeah. here at the Village Grinder that sell awesome coffee to everything we could find in the supermarket, and th- th- this one just worked. Hmm. You, you got to double, you know, you got to brew it with twice the amount of grounds it asks for. You need that real strong Thick coffee, but yeah, sure. like syrup just, almost. Yeah, not. I mean, we probably went through ten or twelve variations, and we were up for a week. Yeah, have you been to Aldi and done their Cafe Busto? No, I have not been to Aldi yet. So I go to Aldi. It's actually an espresso, and it's the finest ground espresso that you ha- mm-hmm. can get. And but it's super dark, super dark. Yeah, I'd recommend. Cafe Busto. I'll, I'll, I'll give the Busto a try, but yes. you know the Maxwell yeah. House has been treating me well for eighteen months. Now. But yeah, you know, don't let me change your recipe. But I, I'm just saying, try something new. You yeah, know? yeah. And plus, uh, a brick of it, like it's literally a brick. You cut into it, it's like, thank you, thank you for letting me breathe. Now, <laughs> um, it's three bucks. Sounds like Aldi's. Yeah. Well, let's get into the talk a little. Yeah, bit. Let's yeah, 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 yeah. We, we always stray away from the conversation. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, right. that's the point. Of it never right? happens. We just don't know where we're going to go exactly. with all this. Right? Exactly. So uh, we talked a little bit about Halloween and all that. So uh, why do you think people like to get scared? Pay to get scared. Pay to get uh, scared. Or even just you know, actually watching scary movies. I mean, you're forced. Well, yeah, to- yeah. I mean, I have, I have a strange uh, take on fear because I I suffer from extreme anxiety attacks. Like which I do want to get into like the difference between fear and anxiety because right. there is a difference. Um. So, but one thing I I quote unquote I mean may or may not enjoy about them is when you when you get done with it you know and you find everything kind of you feel really good after a panic attack is or, or getting scared after that adrenaline has subsided sure. right so I think some people some people chase that high of adrenaline but then I think other people you know chase that kind of re- they go through the getting off the roller coaster part like I I'm like cleansed of that fear sort of idea um it's kind of how i feel about the uh the whole process well I, the, one of the best explanations that i'd heard um y- you talked about the adrenaline rush and all that and, and what happens you know in that fear response is you know your your senses are heightened you get the adrenaline rush and all that and if you do that in a safe environment you get that high from the adrenaline rush right. and all that without actually having to be scared of yeah. of of life and limb right I mean, you know you're in a safe environment but exactly. yeah yeah once a, you, once your body realizes yeah, that so. it's like you know getting to use you know a drug that can kill you but not knowing it's going to it won't kill you yeah right but then again i've been on some roller coasters where i've you know watching that thing go around i wasn't certain you know i was going to survive so exactly. well w- you know to tie on what you were kind of talking about there brian i think that uh some people just have a little six height to them you know they're just yeah. oh yeah you know, i'm just i'm a little sadistic thrill seeker and at least i get to do this and it, and, it, and it relaxes me or or heightens those senses i don't know yeah yeah i mean i'm, I'm not fun to watch i, I don't sometimes. like it per se I'm, I'm not a scary movie guy i'm not a thrill park guy I got pushed out of an airplane on a bachelor buddy's bachelor party once. With, Hopefully you know, with a parachute. With then. a parachute <laughs> attached. Well, with a guy attached to me who had a parachute. I didn't like it. I'm a simple man. I like to drink and, you know, hopefully not be too hungover the next day. That's about as crazy as I sure. want to get with a, with a testing my boundaries. Well, and you, you've got thrill seekers out there. Yeah. And their death is a, a kind of a mystery to them, you know, and they're always wanting to know about it. I mean... Uh, just you know, take a like the funeral business, you know. Some mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. are just like, "What is that all about?" You know. Uh, so, it, death is a curious thing to people. So, right. I, I think that I mean, may I think, tie I think into it's, it a little bit. it's curious to everyone. I mean, it's something we honestly don't know. The right. you know what happened. You know, we fear we of the, see fear of the unknown. Yeah, we see the outside what happens, but we don't know what happens for that person. It happens to until it happens to us, and then we don't get to talk about it. At least. Unless you know, unless he believes some other people's religions and all that stuff, right? Yeah, which I'm not saying it wrong. They could be right, but I, uh, I think it's funny the the people that think that uh, that that fear is like a something they should suppress and all that. It's like you know, with, without that fear response, that that fight or flight, we'd, we'd all probably be dead. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. it is useful. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, it probably took a while for it to get ingrained. You had to get eaten, you know, half the tribe by the saber-toothed tiger, and then you learned to fear yeah, it. That and furry animal that looks cute? Right, yeah. yeah. Not, not so cute. You see those big th- things it has mm-hmm. over there? You know, uh, let's pay attention to those and not mm-hmm. the fear, or the fur, rather. Yeah, exactly. Fear, oh, uh, uh, getting uh, the hairs on the back of your neck uh, to stand up. Uh, I, re- I remember the, one of the first times that happened to me, 
Uh, I was watching, uh, you know, this is, I guess, the soonest uh, that I can remember that it happened to me. Watching Sixth Sense. Remember that mm, movie, Sixth mm, Sense? Mm, mm, mm. And and it was that hallway scene, and just like the back of my neck, the hairs just stood up, and I'm just like, what is going on? What I, is this emotion? I knew emotion? what was going on in the movie the whole time, by the way. I you know, called it from the first thing. <laughs> sure. Actually, I still don't understand what happened. I just thought he was hanging out with a kid the whole time. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of weird. No, yeah. not even. But, no, but, wasn't but it. that sensation of uh, why is that happening to me and why do I get the neck hair standing up? You know, it's 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 a mystery. Mm-hmm. Like, why does my body do that? I mean, I'm sure, you know, you can talk to your physician or something. They'll be able, they'll, they'll be able to fill you in on <laughs> doesn't that doesn't happen one. very often. Right, right. They, you know. The uh, well, you had mentioned anxiety before, mm-hmm. and th- that's a little bit. I mean, some people will confuse the two, but they're not really the same. Right? Fear is more of like a, a response to like an immediate danger. Like, it yeah. is, it's it's about to happen right now. Right. Well, I mean, that's the the big difference between a, like an anxiety attack and a panic attack. So, an anxiety attack is a response to a danger you perceive, mm-hmm. just kind of like fear. Um, a panic attack is a response to an uh, just for no reason. This mm-hmm. this fight or flight you know takes kicks place. in for no yeah. reason yeah and you know every 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 uh fiber in your being is telling you like run to the nearest hospital and your brain's like keeps stirring that manhattan and keep the conversation <laughs> going yep this is cool we're fine we're i'm cool. gonna pass out or possibly die any minute now but how was your day mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> exactly true story I mean, i've been there before behind bars where it's just like what why why do i feel like i'm about to die right now it's amazing how crippling that can yeah. be. I mean, and, you know, what I have found, and I, you know, I'm sure millions of others have figured out in life, is like you just have to acknowledge it is it is what it is and mm-hmm. you know, realize you're not dying, even though 99% of everything in your body says get to a hospital. Right. Now, I see behind you, John, I see you making some coffee. Are you, making some coffee? Are you about to make an Irish? An Irish coffee's on its way. No? Oh, no. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, we do have some uh, more patrons here in the bar. So we do, bu- yeah. Business as usual is still going on. I saw, right? I saw you pull the cream. That's why I brought it up. Oh, okay. You thought I was telling it for you to get that. Okay. I saw. Yeah. So, yeah. Once again, microphones, Hearsay. cameras, earphones. It Stuff happens throws behind off the, the scenes. process a little bit, but right? we'll get through it one yeah. way or another. Push through. Push through. Um, I did have some uh, interesting quotes on fear that uh, since we are here at more of a... Uh, you know the inkwell, yeah, being, literary you know, lounge, not a, not a tattoo parlor. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, obviously, probably one of the more uh, more prevalent quotes that we've heard about fear. You know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. only thing we have to fear is fear, fear itself. itself. Right. Yeah. You know, he, he was like a great poet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do like. Uh, it, to me, I wonder if he kind of read Henry Henry David Thoreau because actually he said something along those lines way before uh, FDR did. Uh, nothing is so nothing is so much to be feared as fear. Um, pretty much along the same lines as yeah. FDR. Yeah. Um, you guys or were, you know, FDR probably had a good writer for him. Could be. So he just kind of read it. <laughs> could be. Um, you guys remember Dune? Are you guys uh, Dune? Like, that was like a, that was like a sci-fi book, right? Yeah, book and movie. Movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They had the quote on there. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Wow, I missed that one. That was yeah. I haven't seen Dune since I was eight years old. Right. Yeah. <laughs> one of uh, one of the the more modern day prophets, uh, Bruce Lee. Bruce uh, Lee. All right. Yeah. He. Uh, Don't fear failure. Not failure, but uh, low aim is a crime. In great attempts, there is glorious uh, even if you fail. There, there is glory even if you fail. Who was uh, that? Bruce Lee. Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to do some not long ones here. Oh, no. Sorry. Right, you, you lost me on that. I, I like, you know, the only thing to fear is fear itself. I, that one's well, about my attention span. W- what about, what about uh, the, the famous one, uh, Chuck Norris? You know, everybody fears him. So, I mean, right. there's so many memes on Chuck Norris. Like, yeah, yeah. You know. I do like the, like, fear is an acronym. False evidence appearing. Oh right yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, I also fear that we're bringing AA terms into a, a bar right now. <laughs> is that what? Uh, is I think I think that's one of their slogans. Yeah, that and like the the K I S S, the keep it stupid. No, keep, keep it, it simple, simple, stupid. stupid. There yeah. you go. Then again, it was probably an acronym somewhere else, and they just adopted it. Probably. So. Yeah. Uh, well, my favorites, like, late at night, like, you know, sometimes I'll have the football game on or something, and, like, those uh, drug rehab commercials will come on and half my bar fleas, you know. <laughs> it's like, no. I'm like, 
Uh, I should have. <laughs> should have turned that. Right. Yeah. Dang it. I mean, that's why I should have this on mute and just have the the moving pictures. <laughs> One of my buddies uh, was starting a bar downtown, and uh, on the top of it, they had a billboard. And I was all like, oh, so um, what's this uh, billboard about AIDS and all that stuff mm. on the billboard? And uh, he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, you might want to come out with me. It was just all like, you know, don't, or it was some kind of uh, hep C or something like, you know, <laughs> ca- catching that. I'm like, you probably don't want that above your bar. He's like, well, I mean, just no needle users and safe sex and well, we're good. He's like, well, Britt, you're the electrician. Why don't you just go turn the line off? <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. Make there's, that there's a cable to cut somewhere. <laughs> exactly. And Hepsi rose ten percent that year. <laughs> All because we shut right. the lights yep. off. There yeah. you go. Um, I want to get into some like reasons people use fear. Uh, we've actually been seeing that this last week oh, in the news. Mm. Well, uh, ooh, yeah. yeah, you're gonna go that far. I was, yeah, gonna, oh, start, okay. I was gonna start off with haunted houses. And right? No, money. no, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting. I, 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 I fear where we're going here. Well, this is this is current events, and then uh, how about hmm. we uh, get some real, and then we'll All right. we'll All get right. lighthearted. After that, how about that? Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, the, the last week we saw three different uh, acts of terrorism, pretty much. is I mean, that's basically what they are. Yeah. We're going to call them a, sp- call a spade a spade. Um, you know, starting Wednesday, uh, we had two of them actually on Wednesday. We had the, the pipe bombs that were being mailed oh, everywhere. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which I found interesting. You know, you had like George Soros, you had uh, the Clintons, you had Obama, you had uh, uh, Debbie Wiseman Schultz, and then you had uh, Robert De Niro. Right, yeah. And I was poor, like, uh, poor guy. What gets lumped in here? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, you know he's not an actual mob boss, right? right I mean, yeah, he just yeah. plays one on TV. Yeah, so. Right. <laughs> so He gets every time there's a pipe bomb scare, one just sent to him this automatically one, yeah. as well, just for good measure. He right. must have one of those addresses that gets confused a lot. Right, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, whatever, the 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue or something. He's like, <laughs> yeah. he's like you know, 1601, and they keep adding a digit in there. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I get the president's mail? Right, yeah, all God. Time. yeah. All people are always asking time. me for pardons. Dang it! <laughs> yep, yeah. We just we just made jokes about the uh, the pipe bombs. Awesome. We did. <laughs> uh, you know, it 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 was a weird scenario. I, I I don't want to dive too much into it, but I it a lot of people out there on the internet talk about this is a false flag thing because they see no. The postage just on there. There's no postage. We're, you know, yeah, we're not going to get crude. But too much it, yeah, it was that. it was. It was a weird event, especially them finding that van from the guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, with, was a van? With, with, yeah. Was, so, okay. so they found the, the bomber down in Florida, and his van had stickers all over it. And when you see... Oh, that's why that some person posted that on Facebook. I was like, why is there a picture of a van on my news With feed? stickers. But it, the you're, weird you're, thing you're is... You're getting way into this. It wasn't this, stickers. <laughs> it was a giant, like, billboard sticker thing. I don't know. It's, it was Crazy. a lot of weird things. So going the on guy there. trying to blow things up drives the van. That's what you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, so, right. and he probably lives down by the river too. Yeah, down by the river. Yep. That's the first thing you do whenever there's you know some sort of crazy act of terror. You pull everyone, everyone in the database who owns vans, and you start there. <laughs> start there. Yep. Uh, also on yeah, uh, I'm glad we're keeping it somewhat lighthearted. On uh, right. also on Wednesday we had that the shooting in Kentucky. Um, oh yes, he, he ended up trying to go to uh, this. African American church first, but they wouldn't let him in, so he went to a Kroger well, and, and shot people. So a guy comes to your place with a gun. I mean, yeah. obviously these people are smart. You know. Yeah, I'm not gonna let you well, in. Kroger should have, you know, taken a, 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 a page from their book and said, "No, sir, not today." <laughs> they, yeah, apparently they don't have the little sticker on there that says "No guns allowed." Right? right yeah, you know, they don't have the sign. Yeah. You know. Yep. Exactly. So Gun-free zone. Right. So, yeah. And then we just had, and this was a this was kind of a big one. Uh, Saturday we had the the. Uh, Pittsburgh synagogue wow, shooting yeah, yeah, yeah. with eleven people dead. Man, that's uh, no bueno. Yeah, unfortunately, I was working Saturday. And I didn't really know about it, and then of course, yeah, you hop on the, the Facebook and people are posting about it, and you're just like, "What is going on?" Well, my, my my phone tells me these things. If I, you accidentally swipe to the right instead of the left when you're like scrolling through your apps, it'll go to, like that news column. There's like the stories of the day. So you're used to Tinder. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I swipe, I swipe, I swipe to the right a lot, so I I, ex- I get confused what I'm doing, and then I get these news stories, and I'm just get depressed. So you're, so you're saying all the social media should just have the same uh, swiping. Uh, yeah, Tinder is really you know broken down the function greatly where it's you know mm-hmm. keeps things simple all right are we uh 
Since we're empty, are we going to the next? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm ready. All right, we're, we're almost are. at the top of the hour. We're all right, ten minutes away from the top of the hour. We're, we're all right. cruising around. We're cruising. Third, third yeah. drink. All right, this one uh, in cold blood. In cold blood. So we got a literary reference right off the bat. There, yeah. uh, a book done by a uh, Truman Capote, who happens to be up on our wall there, and all his uh, morose and angst with his cigarette. Um, I don't know if you guys have read this novel. I, I recommend everyone reads it. It's kind of a uh, uh, about a, uh, a murder that occurs in, I believe, Lawrence, Kansas. Um, it's been a while. But uh, it's, a, it's a really great read, really fun to read. Of course, Truman Capote is you know, best known for, what, Breakfast at Tiffany's, I believe, or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Um, right, let me find my tools. Hmm. Yeah. I like some of the... Uh, I'm going to go back through some of these comments uh, that people are posting. And uh, somebody had posted an, another acronym for fear. Face everything and rise. I dig it. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. For a second, I was thinking face and everything. I was like, that's fire? Yeah, here, no, yeah, face, everything, and rest. That's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, Boyd, don't don't go for the van. Sorry, Boyd. We're going to... Boyd's going to get a van. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, got the, uh, you got the wizard beard, the majestic wizard beard, and a van. Yeah, you're going to be on some <laughs> list somewhere. You're winning really <laughs> hard. <laughs> uh, just don't plaster it and... Anyway, we're not going to go there. So, uh, what's this next one here? Go ahead. It's in cold blood. Yeah, I know, yeah. but can you talk about it a no, little bit? You're asking me to do too much here. No, um, exactly. All right, so yeah, the in cold blood cocktail. Um, mm. Essentially, and this is another one that I kind of found out there already and then had to uh, morph it a bit to my liking. It uses a rye whiskey uh, originally. I've chosen a bonded rye, which... For those what? unfamiliar with a bonded rye, um, essentially, nowadays, it means aged four years and uh, bottled at exactly 100 proof. Hmm. Uh, once upon a time, you know. Is that more like a certification bonded? Yeah, I mean, Not well, yeah, necessarily I mean, bonded, bonded under bonded supervision and all that. But hmm. Once upon a time, when, you know, people were doing weird things to bourbons and stuff and trying to pass them as other stuff, blah, blah, blah. But nowadays, with the FDA, all it pretty much is telling us is it's 100 proof and age for four years so originally it calls for just one ounce per cocktail um it also involves two ingredients called a uh, chinar which is uh, an artichoke liqueur which is a uh, fairly sweet wow. and bitter i said i've ever tried that before. yeah and then a uh, sweet vermouth and i use a fairly rich one with the carpana antica so i pull back on the chinar and the sweet vermouth slightly and up the uh, the rye that's already bonded, so it's already kind of beefy, and then up it a little bit more so it shines through past the other two. Mm -hmm. We're also going to use a pinch of salt for garnish to kind of cut through that bitterness. So, any, any particular salt or just regular table NACL? I mean, whatever's in my uh, my uh, um, you know, Tupperware down here. Gotcha. <laughs> you don't have any... Uh, like uh, Himalayan, Himalayan salt, salt yeah. or uh, yeah, that, that that pink stuff yeah. or like that yeah. black volcano salt. smoke yeah smoked salt or negative on all accounts all negative right. Ghost Rider patterns full patterns full hey Johnny B thanks for watching joining us all right I'm gonna zoom in a little tighter on this whole concoction of stuff you got going on over here yeah. this is going to be one of those episodes that's going to you should probably watch it rather than just listen to it <laughs> right <laughs> there's a lot going on it's pretty yeah, cool I don't, I'm still microphones and discs and, uh, and if you need to move it out of the way you can move it out of the way you're good get on, yeah. Get out. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that's that's what that's why we gave you the uh, more expensive microphones and stuff like that that was a poor decision <laughs> well, we, we, want, we wanted uh, ease of, of use these the ones we have don't really move well show me two don't move so good. Speaking of that, we need to up that brand. Move so good. What your your language? Uh, so no the uh, the microphone stands for our guests. Yeah, uh, we need better ones. Those are really yeah. expensive ones that notes you guys have for another, Yeah, notes, notes for, for another day. Yeah. Oh, back to these glasses. We're back there. Yeah. Chill. Nice. And those are more of a um, like a, a champagne champagne oh, one, style. Want to be martini? Coop. Yeah. Yeah. Coop. Coop. So cool. I like uh, I like what's going on here. I'm I'm a fan of all the action going on behind the bar, bar here. I don't fear. Right, we're all. back now. Sweet. All right. All right. I don't, now, I don't now fear we're gonna do a little stir in action so we don't bruise the cocktail. It almost looks like a 
just like a soda. Exactly what it's going to taste like. <laughs> exactly. I just want you to think Dr. Pepper when you drink this. Perfect. Right? 20, so the 24th flavor? Yep, 24th <laughs> flavor. That was a uh, that was a big cocktail for me uh, back in 2009. I used to drink... Dr. Pepper? Uh, no, I, uh, whiskey and Dr. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. Yep. Mr. Pibb? Yeah, whiskey and Dr. Pepper. That was kind of my thing. And I did the cheap whiskey... Uh, the smoothest silk, and I, I I can't think of the name of the uh, the the whiskey that. What was that whiskey that I used to drink all the time? Grandpa used to drink it all the time. Did it come in a plastic bottle? Joke. Yes, you could Grand get it. Free. Uh, it it uh, had an old man on it, yellow label, yellow and brown label. It's an old school whiskey. Yeah. Hmm. It was, but their motto is smooth as silk. Hmm. Yeah, this looks velvet? interesting. Yeah, black velvet. That's good. Uh, no, it wasn't black velvet. Get that pour just right. Yep, that's how I know I made it right. That's <laughs> how I know I can count or put things in a jigger. <laughs> now for the salt. Mm-hmm. Inter- that's an interesting... Uh, well, and salt is just a flavor enhancer, so it yeah. you know, doesn't really... Uh, I mean, so is sugar in cocktailing as well. True, yeah. I like to think of sugar much like salt in cooking. Mm-hmm. A little bit more, of it more into the microphone salt. so we can hear oh, you. Sorry. Yeah, there a you little go. bit of it can bring out a flavor, much like salt, but if you overdo it, it can ruin the whole thing. True. Kessler. There it is. That's All what I was right. Did you just Google uh, that or someone? I, go- I just Googled it real quick. I thought someone answered for if you. we only had a device, yeah. Right. That would have been I was awesome. like, my phone's sitting right over here. I can do that. <laughs> but yeah, Kessler was actually my grandfather's drink. And uh, I was at my grandmother's house, and she was moving, and she had like four bottles of it that were all like kind of crushed. And like, wow, you've had those sitting there for quite some time now. Um, and I tried it. I'm like, it is kind of smooth as silk. It's actually decent. Uh, no, I, I no. don't. I don't believe you. I'm, no, I'm calling. I'm call it, it does nothing to justice on those over there. But I mean, for a cheap whiskey, it was it was decent. Got a little citrusy flavor aroma to it. A little bit off the top with that lemon zest. Yeah, you're not. Wow. I mean, just 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 a hint of that that salt there. Brings the enhances that flavor. Yeah. The bourbons, bourbons coming through the rye, the rye, the rye, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. strong, strong. Not trying, to, I'm trying to not come up boozy. with words to say. Words. To There's say. a little words. bit of sweetness in there, but not uh, a little bit. Yeah, sweet vermouth shining through. A little bit bitter with mm-hmm. that uh, Chinar liqueur. I, I like the. Uh, it's interesting the differences because the last one was so creamy because mm-hmm. of the the egg, and this one is more the uh, the booze forward. Because of the rye. This is our, our, our you know, our, our dinner right here before we get to our the dessert meat and cocktail potatoes. at the end. Yeah. That, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, that's the way I would have put it. It was like the last two cocktails have been light on the flavor of alcohol. Right. And this is a lot heavier. This not, is, uh, not, not overpowering. Right. This but, is uh, what are, yeah, we call our, our stirred and boozy or our spirit forward. Mm-hmm. I prefer stirred and boozy. But it's not like a, it's not like a burning forward, like it's not a warming burning boozy right you it's know. it's just you it's smooth noticeable smooth as silk <laughs> we may like, have been talking about that earlier like kessler no i guess where where was or what was the uh, the rye that you use uh rittenhouse bonded rye um a solid product yeah there we're here, here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hold on yeah, there you go Boop. camera thank Boop. you vanna <laughs> <laughs> we got it the shot. Yeah. See, that's usually my go-to bonded rye. That are uh, the old Overholt bonded that hit the market here. I want to say six months Ooh, ago. Six or months so, ago. Yeah. It's been a while because it was on our old menu. Um, solid product as well. But Rittenhouse tends to be a a, a a a label and a name that people tend to recognize. So mm. where I would go with this is it's it's a lot like an old fashioned. It's got the sweetness, but it's also got the the liquor right up front. Yeah, yeah, old fashioned or Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Or even a black go. Manhattan yeah. too. A black Manhattan, yeah, like a an imperfect or a perfect black Manhattan with the it's a uh, hybrid. Yeah, and this was called Into the Cold. Is that, uh, or in cold, cold blood? blood. In cold yeah, blood. human art. You know, Truman Capote's mm-hmm. uh, novel. It's quite delicious. I like it. It'll get the job. It'll get you where you're going. Well, yeah, it's a hundred proof. 
I've gotten to the point where um, a lot of the alcohol, when it's when it's eighty proof, and you know you're just hitting that bare minimum, it's like, eh, I'm not that excited about it. No, yeah, you get start getting into ninety, ninety two proof. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we can talk. Yeah, you can go something like uh, what is it? Backbones Uncut Bourbon, that I believe, comes in at like one hundred seventeen. Mm-hmm. I might be wrong on that, but it's I like, up there. close uh, enough. I like the uh, Colonel Lee Taylor. Um, they've got some that are around the hundred well, proof mark. My favorite thing is, uh, you know. People always used to uh, poo-poo on uh, wild turkey, you know, 101 bourbon and rice, and like, oh, that overproof stuff is, you know, it's crap. Well, technically, now, it's not overproof, even. Right. Well, yeah, but uh, you know, the higher proof, <laughs> right. the higher mm-hmm. test stuff. Um, and now, you know, every company is doing it with their product. It's like they all have that. That uh, well, the, every every company wants a flaming drink, so right, you, know, yeah. you got to do well, that. That's Bacardi 151, really. Yes, yeah, that's getting a little too crazy. For oh, yeah, that is 150. Yeah, that's a. Uh, yeah, when it, when you can light it on fire, it's it's gonna burn. I draw the line <laughs> at like one thirty, you know, or like uh, plantation OFTD. It's about a, about my limit. I think that's like sixty nine percent alcohol. So, so uh, we kind of talked about it, but I kind of want to go back to it because we really didn't talk about it. Haunted houses. I don't, know. I don't, I just, I don't think Scary we talked Acres about it at all. Ooh, two weeks ago. You yeah. just went to Scary Acres. I, I was not tell sc- us your experience. Well, that's the way on the, on the one on the way to Blair, right? So yeah, it's 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 out west, um, and I'm not trying to hate or anything like that, but I can smell the gasoline. We don't know from where it. Blair is. Yeah, I, I can smell the gasoline from the chainsaw. I have like I know they have no chain on it too. Right. So if I don't feel like running, I'm just not going to. So is 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 it for scare or is it for teenagers? <laughs> I mean, was it was it legit or was it? Uh, I mean, they gimmicky. Do, they do a good job. I think all haunted houses, in my opinion, are a little gimmicky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, a little. I'm gonna come around the corner and just yeah. yell at you. Yeah, to me, it's more. It's less about being scared. More Isn't about a, uh, house a gimmick. Well, exactly. Could, could be. Yeah. I, I I was dragged there. So. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, uh-huh. it's all right. Yeah, truth comes out. I didn't even pay for my ticket, but. <laughs> You well, know, it was a good time, regardless. I'll tell you, Mystery Manor, uh, by by hands down, I, I I think is one of the greatest they've got here in town. Uh, only for the fact that it's been around for so long, and they've got a neat little backstory and a neat little way to get you into the house. And uh, they, they do actually, the limo company, right? VIP limo takes you there. Mm-hmm. You could, yeah. I'm pretty sure I heard that on the radio. Limos um, take you anywhere. Right. But uh, I, I know the guy actually that runs that haunted house. I've met him quite a few on different occasions. But uh, it, it's it's just neat the way they've set up the rooms because they actually had. Uh, kids that are looking to get into like uh, scenic work, you know, like right. doing theater stuff. Mm-hmm. They're like, come, come do your craft over here. You know, come that check said, it out. That said, Scary Acres does a good job with that. I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, I'm going into it already knowing that I'm gonna be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What really did scare me though is like the they had like air compressors In the or back whatever. Of your head, it wasn't you're just really. Like, it was more people. startling. Startled. Not, yeah. Yeah. Not scary. Where I would jump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know. exactly. I uh, I actually have a story from when I was a kid. Um, I was probably 16, 17, and I got a chance to volunteer at mm-hmm. a haunted house. And they needed someone to uh, to wear, like, this wolf mask and lay in a casket. And nobody wanted to. And I'm like, I'm fine. Whatever. I'll do it. Right. No big deal. So you get I'm, punched in the face? Well, so that was the thing. I, the mask was so huge that people would, like touch it and like oh no it's just it's just a fake prop i would just lay perfectly still and i remember this one couple came up and and like the 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 woman didn't want anything to do with it and the guy was like it's fake you know he's like pushing on the mask which isn't even touching my face it's like right you know he's and all of, i just jumped up and she hit the floor just just out i don't like so i had to like get up out of the cast and like help like she like was out Right out, like she just fainted. fainted. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Well, apparently I did my job." All yeah, right, well, for sure. <laughs> you, you know, speaking of jumping out of caskets, um, Carly's brother Bubs, um, that was his job at Mystery Manor. Was uh, not the first room, but the second room that you would go into. Uh, they would get it, give you this spiel with this animatronic robot, and then there was a desk in front of him, and he would be the uh, literally the first scare. 
um, uh, the first room you go into, it's just the guy explaining what it's all about. He just he does this little axe thing above your head or whatnot. Right. It, which it's just fun, fun, neat little story. And that that guy is actually the owner. Did you just call that a fun, neat story? Because I heard the backstory. Wasn't that like an axe murder that happened? <laughs> it's a fun, neat <laughs> story. Fun, neat story. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but he tells you to look down the hallway, and then like a lot of animatronic stuff going on. Uh, but yeah, you're you're in a very tightly confined room first, but then he was the second room, and he would actually get the first big scare. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, we're in the house. You know, uh, but he loved doing it. Yeah, you know, like um, so. There, it's something to say about people who get their kicks off scaring people. <laughs> yeah, and there's also I feel like it's who you go with, what right. your mindset is. Yeah, and in Scary Acres defense, we were like. They were closing in 15 minutes, so I think that like we were just like, like oh, walking we're ready through. To get off we, were, the shift. <laughs> we were going in like bigger groups, etc. I did run into a regular from Inkwell. There hey, you go. Yeah, in line, yeah. Fair we enough. Went, we went through together, but as a, as a cast member at the haunted house or just in the no, group? no, he was in our group. Okay. But at the same time, there's something to be said about that. I think as well, like. Do you have any phobias or anything? Like, uh, I know that there's people that are like clowns, man. You know what I'm scared of? And maybe because my hands are wet all the time, it's plugging things into outlets. Oh, really? Do you think it's going to arc and... Well, I, I've been shocked a few times, but you know, you're behind the bar. Well, you're you should. An outlet, you should. But that's your like hands. a that's like a physical harm, real thing. That's it's a, startling. Yeah, John, it's, I don't know if you've been told this, but you shouldn't put forks in outlets. That's right. not what they're for. They're for eating. <laughs> no, I paper I, clips. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Yeah, right. <laughs> <I'm> exactly. gonna, <laughs> yeah. Um. How far down can we go? I, it, the first time I ever got uh, electrocuted, well, I was sitting behind the sofa at, at our old Ponca home, and uh, I was sitting behind the couch, and yeah, I, I had a fork or a paper clip or something of that nature, and I stuck it in there, and I got zapped. I got zapped real good, and mom's just all like, you know, how'd that feel? Right. <laughs> I'm just like, mm, I'm not, not going to do that again. I remember the burn mark was actually, it looked like a phoenix. Like, it, it was really cool. You were rebirth. Yeah, I was exactly. rebirth. I was a new man. I mean, I'll tell you one thing, though. Like, when you're opening a bar and you got wet hands and you get electrocuted, it's kind of better than Red Bull. Mm-hmm. That'll get you going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get yeah. The, the teeth chattering. Oh, like yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Right up. Yep. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm familiar with getting zapped. Oh, yeah. I worked electronics before, so it's... Right. Yeah, I've, I've been Fun zapped stuff. a time or two. That is a legit phobia of mine, though. Like, I do think about it every time before I plug but, something in. But it's in not an unreasonable phobia it's it's actually something that can cause physical harm <laughs> so. true, true. i just feel like the greater population doesn't concern themselves as much as i do about it right sure. but like people that have a fear of clowns it's like um well and, and that's that all kind of stems back to to their childhood like right i i i should have a fear of being shocked because i was i don't know probably three four or five at the time when that happened to me behind the sofa and i should have some sort of fear which i don't i'm kind of a semi-electrician in, in the profession that i am in uh but electricity doesn't bother me there's a lot of things that don't bother me though so well we ended yeah. up giving our sister a phobia oh my gosh all right. So, if you want to bring up that story, that's fine. Right. Yeah, Go right we, ahead. So, as a kid, we we ended up uh, duct taping her to the floor in the basement, and then shutting off the lights. So, not only does she have a fear of no, dark, basements, yeah, of dark, of dark, but yeah. um, like just the sound of like packaging tape. You know, it's just it's like nails on the chalkboard for her. I mean, all the little hairs you probably pulled off when you were getting rid of it too. I, I think mean, she was clothed. So oh, I mean, okay, yeah, that's so, probably better too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, so It'd be a it was, different story if we duct taped her when. No, no, we're not gonna go there. Be a lot of therapy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. She still talks about it. So, <laughs> winning on the older brother thing categories, thing. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, do you enjoy being scared? Um, it's not thrilling. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of depends on my mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, it can be funny, and then it can be enjoyable to plot your revenge. Um, so I I, that, I guess it would depend on the situation, right? Right. Yeah. Like like for real scared or like no, I'm going to a haunted house and I I seek out those thrills exactly. and all that. So, um, I mean, if I'm holding glassware and somebody jumps around the corner and I drop everything, I'm not going to be a happy camper. Right. right. Exactly. How about you, Tyler? Do you uh, do you enjoy being scared or is it just depend on the situation? Absolutely not. Oh, oh no, he turned off. Oh, well, I I, I did I'm that. Back. I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. Now you're back. Sorry, I had to make some drinks. Go right. put them places. I, you know. One less person on the mic. I've right. got mute microphones. Yeah, running the bar. 
Um, you actually have to work? Yeah. yeah Dude. We, Sometimes uh, it happens. Yeah, I know. I love it. Uh, no, I do not enjoy being scared. I have no purpose for it. <laughs> so you're not one that goes to haunted houses or watches scary movies? Or no, no, not at all. Do you enjoy scaring someone? Um, you know, Shelby that works at the barbershop next door, I'll you know, mess with her quite a bit. I sometimes will uh, either uh, get here earlier than her on Sundays, and I'll just kind of sit there in the dark room until she comes and opens up. But that's about it. <laughs> I I actually I'm the, nice. I'm that guy that like I don't try and sneak up on people but apparently I'm just a freaking ninja and right. like hmm. I don't even try but I scare the bejesus out of people a lot because they're like I didn't even hear you coming I'm like I wasn't even trying to be yeah. like I'm not that guy you'll hear me coming from a mile away walk up <laughs> just, you get the the shuffle you drag yeah, your feet yeah. you know loud footsteps heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Labored breathing. Right. <laughs> yeah. There was uh, there was one time when back when uh, we lived in Eagle Run and uh, the folks weren't home to pass out candy and they're like, Britt, can can you handle passing out oh, candy this- to kids? And yeah. I'm like, Yeah, no, I'm to- I can totally do this. Um, so I had this old man wizard mask, you know, um, and so I I painted my eyes black, right? And so if you looked like through the eye holes of the mask it was just these black things you know and i wore a suit i wore gloves and a bunch and i uh on uh, on the i had a little sign next to the bench that says please just take one and those that did abide by those rules i did nothing because it was sitting on my i never hung out with those kids we took like handfuls Mm -hmm. right right those that took handfuls yeah let's and i i i I literally had a, a a clear view of of the kids and and as soon as they came within 10 or 15 feet then i'd shut my eyes right so some of them wouldn't even get they're like i'm not going up there no i don't need to go up there uh but yeah i had this this one kid was just like big old handfuls of candy and i just i i literally just sat up as he was grabbing the candy you know a big handful of candy and he i think he pissed his pants he may have done that <laughs> but he did throw the candy everywhere how old, okay. how old was this child um, that old enough to form a memory. 12, 12, 13. <laughs> yeah, 12, 13. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair game. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I mean, oh, that, yeah, if you're still trick-or-treating at 12 years old, right, you, you deserve, deserve that. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. I, if yeah, you're taking handfuls. I'm a firm believer in the 10 to 11 age cutoff. Oh, the, the, the trick-or-treaters that come at like 10 o'clock at night, yeah. you yeah. know, when your oh, kids oh, are in bed they're like and they're 22. high schoolers. Yeah, well, there's no yeah. candy left in that bucket by 10. Mom's driving by with her car. Just yeah, watching, yeah. The, yeah, not even but, gonna walk with the kids. By the time you hit junior high, you need to move on from getting candy to throwing eggs at people getting candy. I mean, it's a it's a natural transition. In the <laughs> the, you know, right the, the order of operations in <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah, it's right. the next logical step, right? <laughs> um, well, since we're, I mean, we've talked about uh, using fear for houses or for haunted houses, which is a lot more fun. Fear but, for houses. Uh, <laughs> what, yeah, fear, fear for, for money. Fear, yeah. fear for money. Right, fear yeah. of the American dream. Yeah. Um, what about uh, fear in marketing? Mm. Using oh. thing, using fear to sell. I mean, well, it's definitely a, a it's a it's a pain point. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's something you know, I think they call it that pain points that you bring up, and you know this could happen to you. I mean, insurance mm-hmm. that's what they live off of. Absol- right? Absolutely, what, the the what ifs. Uh, even even like LifeLock, which is a legit thing. Like I have LifeLock, mm. but. I mean, basic. Their marketing strategy is Does, apparently, it, apparently it worked on them. Yeah, yeah. I would like to say I have LifeLock too. Doesn't yeah. the guy from Pawn Stars have LifeLock? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure well, I saw him on the, the commercial. The right. owner actually put his social security number out there, to, which I thought was a, a a good marketing strategy. Like, I know I made ten grand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank nice. you very much. Before they shut that's it down, that's what you get. We're sponsored by LifeLock. <laughs> Boom. Nice. nice. Yeah. No, I think I think it goes on quite a bit where they use fear. I mean, it's it is a powerful motivator. Well, I um, mean, I, I I'm not a political guy, but I, you know these political ads are coming on and like telling me I support the Taliban and I'm burning people, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I did, maybe I, I should really. I don't want to burn people. <laughs> I'm like killing farms in Iowa, and I'm like, ah, I didn't even know. <laughs> and then the other people are telling me, you know, that I'm like killing other people. I, can't I think that's a baseline for any political ads. Right, it's right, just, yeah. pure, just yeah. fear. Yeah, just. yeah. They should just, yeah, the ad should just say fear. Uh-huh. Vote for Tim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh uh, man. Yeah. I I think it goes on. I don't I don't know if it's uh, been something that has always been with with uh, marketing and all that, but I mean, you're seeing a lot more drug commercials and all mm-hmm. that, which oh yeah. Um, 
I'm afraid of drug commercials. I'm afraid of what the yeah. drugs will give me if I take the drugs to fix the <laughs> other thing. This one comes with a hot chicken and puppy. Right. I want that disease. This, exactly. Yeah, this, this <laughs> but one you're going to poop a lot. Right. This <laughs> one will fix balding. May result in death. Anything that starts <laughs> with Dang. do you or somebody you know... It's going to be right. fear-mongering Well, right I, mean, there. Th- I mean, that guy over there doesn't look well. I guess I kind of know him, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. It's all right. The, uh, the music died, so I was like, just restart whatever you got. Yeah. The music, the music died. died. Yep. Oh, yeah. Can we just finish out by just singing that whole song <laughs> word by word? As long as we don't play the song. So all much. right, yeah. <laughs> so this is this has actually been a, a pretty crazy weekend for me. Uh, I've really only been home for like 40 minutes this whole entire weekend. Uh, between jobs and doing other things. Uh, last night uh, was the annual Bubs and Kristen uh, Halloween bash. Uh, 10th annual uh, Bubs and Kristen uh, Halloween bash. and His brother like oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I wasn't tracking. That's right. So, yeah, like, yeah, is yeah. this a bar? You didn't know about it. Yeah, no, it's no, the tenth no. annual. So, so uh, <laughs> they, they always up their game one notch, one notch. If you were to see their house in the neighborhood they live in, which is like a hundred and ninety sixth and Harrison, which I just heard they they found a body on one hundred and ninety second and Harrison in a ditch, a teenager. Which I, I, I'm interested to find out what that's all about. So, uh, the side topic, but literally, you <laughs> we are bar. jumping all right. over you, the place. You, you literally fear mongering over here. Yeah, yeah. you literally Using fear to sell. Yeah, yeah. you literally could Move take there. all the decorations from all the houses in their neighborhood, and it wouldn't equal to the amount of decorations he has on his house. You know, like he goes all out for Halloween. It's it's their event. Um, and so they asked me to DJ last night, which was was it was awesome. I started off real low, yeah, real quiet. Everybody was able to chat, and then uh, I think it was like ten thirty, eleven o'clock. It hit, and people wanted some sing along songs. And well, you can ask your brother to do it. You know, your brother's actually got a little it's, bit longer of a quarter. Those of you that are not watching, he's trying to make drinks. Then he's the, the, right. the alcohol was just out of reach. I got uh, it. <laughs> anyway, I had the I had the crowd singing. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I did literally six songs where that were sing along songs. And uh, somebody came back like one or two songs later after I kind of killed that and was like, all right, we just need to just go some music and all that stuff. They're like, we need some more sing along songs. I'm like, I can't play every winter song out there in the book. Like, calm down. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Did you play Monster Mash? Uh, I did it caught not. on I did, in a flash. I did not. I did not. But I, I, I did only play Thriller twice. I, I did it at like 7. You showed great restraint, my friend. I did. I showed great restraint. I did it at 7 and then like at midnight. you, you got to appreciate the turnaround of the party, too. Exactly. So. Like, yeah. Well, they had probably 150 oh, nice. people show up. I mean, it was, it was, it was a good rollout. It, All right, Bub and Gus. Bob and Gus. Bob, Bob, Bob Gus. and Kristen. Oh, yeah. I got more friends than I do. But uh, they had a costume contest. Um, Brett Michaels and uh, his wife. Uh, so there was Brett Michaels and then his wife dressed up as the guitarist for Brett Michaels, the guy with the long black hair. Yeah, they won. They and But then Bob Ross was kind of a run, runner-up. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. I believe Slash. it was Slash. Slash. Yeah. I don't know if Slash played with. He didn't George play Bre- no, no, he Brett did not. Michaels. No, he did not. <laughs> anyway, no, it was, that was Guns and Roses. It's a lot of yeah. fun. If if you can attend, uh, and if you know who Bubs and Kristen is, uh, that that was the party to be at yep. last night for yep. sure. And if you weren't, you missed out. Yeah. Apparently, I'll you be did. there next year. Bub and Bob. Yep, Bub, Bub and Bob. Bob. <laughs> and Gus. And Gus. And Gus will be there too. <laughs> Excellent. Right. All right. What do we? Uh, what are you making here? Yeah. Tyler? What are we mixing up here? This is the. This is the dessert. This is dessert. This is your uh, mm. Russian pumpkin. Hmm. Made with, oh, and you had the Brickway vodka, which I've, I'm a fan of because, Brickway. Because Omaha. Yeah. Drink local. So what's your, uh, you want to talk a little bit about this drink? Oh, he's, yeah, he's. Time out, time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time please. Um, yeah, so obviously my inspiration here was the classic white Russian. Mm-hmm. I saw the cream that you put in there, so... Yep, yep. So, uh, you know, of course, we have our Kahlua and vodka going on. Mm-hmm. And then I've subbed out your standard cream you would use, and I use this... Uh, I'll bring it over. There it is. Fulton's Harvest um, Pumpkin Pie Cream Liqueur. Pumpkin which Spice is, All The Things. Yeah, it's a 
It's actually absolutely delicious. Um, mm, that's good. But it's delicious I'm, in a way that like you can drink one, even just that on the rocks or this cocktail. Does in it and like itself. actually taste like pumpkin pie, not oh, just yeah, all yeah. spice? That's. Can I t- can I take a look at that? Oh yeah, bottle? sure. I just want to see what's going on here. This. Oh, it's just a uh, just a twelve percent, but uh, you know uh, most cream liqueurs are going to be a, that. Well, I mean most creams are zero, so. Oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Okay. We got we got rid of the cream liqueur. We got rid of yeah, the yeah. only non-alcoholic uh, part of the White Russian and put alcohol in it. So Ooh, is this a cinnamon Excellent. stick that you put? It's in a cinnamon yeah. stick. Yeah, I do love Man. cinnamon. I so yeah, this was you know, and, and this product's done down in uh, Bardstown, K- Kentucky. You can drink through that. You can drink through um, the cinnamon stick. And they do this once a year. It's just kind of their their one-off thing, and they sell it till it's gone, and then you know wait till next year. So. Honestly, I have not been doing a good job of hand selling it, and I was looking for product, and I said, "Hey, let's move this." It's very seasonal. Oh, it's very cinnamony. It's very right up there with Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, I tried mm-hmm. drinking through the cinnamon stick; it was difficult. Yeah, that's why I, I chose not <laughs> that's to. What actually, she I, said. <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. I, really. I, I did it, be, it makes no sense. Yeah, I used this that line was, actually twice today. Right. I was working with a bunch of dudes building stuff. In my uh, white Russians, I'm not used to so much ice, so mm, this mm. this isn't as creamy as yeah. the white Russians yeah. that I'm used to. Yeah, not um, heavy on the cream. Not heavy. No, like, yeah, like no that. pun intended. No, no heavy this, cream. This is no. I rather enjoy this. There's not like one flavor that stands out above. Mm. It's it all. Yeah, I mean, the the vodka is just you know. I don't more even than taste. Anything. I don't yeah. even taste the vodka. Well, you know, there's only an ounce and a half in there. Okay, but still, there's some in there. But, yeah, that was a joke. That there's an ounce and a half uh, of vodka yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, you, I I kind of tweaked. Uh, the, although I mean, I found everyone has their own white Russian proportions, especially when they make it at home. They're like, yeah, Kahlua vodka cream, we're good to go. But typically, I use uh, three quarters an ounce of a uh, Kahlua in my white Russian, and an uh, ounce and a quarter of vodka, and then the heavy cream, um, because that uh, one of the the harvest pumpkin spice, wherever it went, is uh, yeah, tossed it back there. It, it is fairly sweet so mm-hmm. it's not like your normal cream that's going to balance out your white russian i had to right, pull right. back on the kalua hold, hold please yeah, there, there you there go, go. There go. i had to pull back on the kalua which you know got some sweetness to it and up the vodka a little bit to balance the cocktail no this is no it's good i like the pumpkin spice by the way never go to a fancy bar and if a bartender asks how the drink is say it's well balanced we're, nah. si- we're sick of hearing that. Yeah. Or what is it, a what, diet? What would, you, uh, what would you rather us say? I would describe it something you're awesome. getting. Yeah, I mean, th- at this point, yeah. Because it's become such a catchphrase and, you know, cocktail culture, even amongst ourselves. And I catch myself doing it. And, and it, there is merit to it. I mean, right. you are looking for that balance. But, you know, can you, you know, it's like, oh, I'm really getting the citrus notes in it or even critique it. Say, so you, you want to be more specific. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's well balanced. It's like, well, yeah, you can put it on your head, but. You know, it was a cool. It was a cool term, you know, like a little while back. But it's like now, I I kind of think it's a cop out. Generic. So when, I, when I'm feeling, you know, lazy, I'll say that too. But but there is also something to be said. About yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's truth. In yeah, it, it is. Um, but true past that, I mean, you should if you go to a a decent bar, you should uh, expect you know the majority of their cocktails are good. It's like saying. Mm-hmm. Going to you know it's a beer say, place and saying like tastes like it's beer, well balanced beer, right? Or yeah. yeah, you know, or like you tastes say, like booze. If you said something along the lines of um, you know all the flavor profiles are coming out, yeah, instead of saying it's well balanced, oh, it's like I, yeah, it's like I, drinking I, a bourbon and you're like it tastes like bourbon. It's like, great, it's like I served right. a bourbon. It, so. it, it did it did its job. It got that far. Mm-hmm. Like, but what else are we getting there? No, it's a but, cinnamon, uh, vanilla, etc. My I'm definitely getting the cinnamon on this yep. because of the cinnamon. Stuff. Right, that'll do it. That'll it's, do it. It's nice. This is, I mean, uh, I'm not one for ordering a, a white Russian or, or, mm. or whatnot at a, a facility. Uh, I've made them at a home before, at a bar. Right. Uh, but if you're bowling, this, it's a must have. Right. <laughs> some, some <laughs> I just want my yes. rug back, man. Yeah. <laughs> with, with, with the light on the cream. You know, because I I I'm, I don't like the cream. I, it's like you're drinking milk. I don't, right. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. looking for if I'm going to be drinking liquor, <laughs> I want it to taste like liquor. Better be some liquor. In this there. is nice. This is smooth. Um, it's not overly it's sweet. Good way right. to end the night. This is a good. Yeah, uh, I figured it would be a good last one. Like I said, I kind of always started off a little bit in the the light sweet and then moved into the beef, and now we're at the dessert. I'm not a hockey game 
guy watcher. I'm not. I don't watch the hockey. But hockey. if he ain't a hockey well, game watcher guy, but, but I'll tell just you what. That statement alone would. It, just if because I was I'm wearing the LA Kings hat right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't go to the ice pitch. I, I I drink this watching hockey. That's what I do. So he's saying he would never drink it because he doesn't watch <laughs> hockey. <laughs> that's, that's not true. That's, that's not true. That was the takeaway. Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> that's what, I, that's what I, I'm I've hearing. Been to, oh, well, oh, so that brings to a, a, a story up in my mind. We don't we, do these. We, we did. Uh, do you fear hockey? No, 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 no. We were at a hockey. Just a skate. We were at a hockey game. Uh, I, I can't remember who it was. It was uh, the Omaha team, not the Lan- not Lancers. Who are you talking about? The Mavericks. Mavericks. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was a Maverick hockey game. And I was gonna go with Corn Huskers. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, that stands for everything, right? So, so no, like, uh, we get we got some free tickets, and we're like, yeah, let's go, let's uh, have fun. And the, they were way up, you know, top or not top, top, but we were kind of in the middle. And uh, there was like nobody sitting right in front, and we're like, uh, okay, let's just go sit up front, you know. So mm-hmm. we sat up front for the whole game. A halftime comes through, right? And uh, they're out there with the t-shirt cannons, you know. Pew, 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 you Way shoot over them your off. head now. So this yeah. is where the fear comes in. What yeah, happened? I should have sat in the middle seats because then... Uh, <laughs> the, shoot it at me. Well, no, 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 no. Here's what it was. Ki- the kid that was throwing uh, t-shirts and, and doing the t-shirt cannon and, and doing what, all these prizes, he ha- had checked his phone real quick and he slid in his back pocket and turned really fast. Well, it flew out of his back pocket. And he looks over and the Zamboni's coming. And it's literally like eight feet in front of the Zamboni when it lands. And it was just all like, he just watched it and he goes, I'd say we're in slow motion, but and, the Zamboni's and, and, like, and, and he turned around. Motion, yeah, anyway. he turned around and he saw we were looking. And we're like, I thought this story was going to end a lot differently. <laughs> yeah, no. It's like, How I well can you run on ice? Poor child his cell, die yeah, his cell phone got yeah. ate up by a Zamboni. Yeah. It's hilarious. Sure it's Absolutely Christmas hilarious. Song. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> top five things they cover in insurances for uh, iPhones, whatever. You I mean, sh- I Zamboni I, accident. They make you right? fear it. Yeah. Your cell phone got eaten by a reindeer. Yeah. There's Zamboni. Cell phone got eaten by a Zamboni. We've all, yeah, we've all been there. We've all been there. Yeah, it's it's, it's part of reality. <laughs> Sitting in a nice room on really Christmas Eve. That, uh, this, that, uh, was, it was terrible. There. Could you, there was something wrong with this one. Could right. you please remake that? It, it drank it was, itself. It was, yeah, it was t- it was el terrible. Oh. <laughs> no, this was I, delicious. Was story. I, so absolutely love it. it. It was this was awesome. While supplies last. While supplies last. last. Yes. Yeah, right. Well, I think we uh, kind of ran the gamut on yeah, on I think fear. We did yeah. I mean, we, we touched a little bit. I'm on, well, on everything. I'm well scared. Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> afraid right now too. <laughs> I've, I've had two panic attacks while we've been doing this episode. You Perfect. Guys just don't know. Is that why you had to leave? It. And uh, right, yeah, that's why I had to go compose you know, check on that table and go yeah. get myself another one real quick, and then get back to the third one. And your nerves are good. Yeah, exactly. It's well, th- thank lovely. you for hosting yeah, tonight. Thanks for coming by. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Is there is there anything? else that you want to say about the bar or just come on down yeah. come on down like yeah. those like yeah. great yeah. commercials you're, on the next, all the, all uh, the, you're the next contestant on the we're open well. seven days a week yeah i guess uh, yeah open seven days a week we open at 3 p.m monday through friday we close at midnight nightly unless mm-hmm. you're drinking the whole bar under then i'll stay open till two for you if you really want and i'm not tired you got uh, a cot in the back and you just yeah you just kind of I'll, I'll check in on you uh saturday and sunday we open at noon because football Mm-hmm. And because I love football, and I want to be here and watch football. Now, you Happy hour is three to six. Yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, which there was something I was looking up, and it did not. I'm have just throwing your graphics like, up here. They had happy hour at like two a.m. and like you close at midnight, and I was we like, we used oh, to have a reverse. Happy oh, hour. we had a reverse happy hour. Yeah, okay. I should probably go find out where that is and fix that someday in the near future. Yeah, and you, but you don't serve food here. It's just a craft cocktail. What are you talking about? I got cracker jets, n- jets, and nuts, and Doritos. <laughs> Does it? Have the thing it's in the box. Need. The all pri- you need. I got the old school box. We yeah. get to keep the prize that's yeah. in the box. Uh, depending on what it is. I mean, if it's <laughs> a really cool temporary tattoo, <laughs> we'll yeah. see what's up. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> Timber Wood Fired Bistro, uh, our neighbor over yeah. there, and Swartz's Delicatessen here. Um, you're more than welcome to call them and have food delivered. Uh, yep. Sometimes they can bring it over. Sometimes you got to go. It depends on okay. your business. But you allow pizza, food here, do, yes. of course. Yeah, okay, I perfect. encourage it. You have another drink. You Excellent. know what we're getting at is uh, the Countryside Village is actually a great little place. You. Uh, you guys know that are listening um the casual pint is one of our sponsors mm-hmm. and we get our beer over there they have come great over food here. too they got great food over there they'll probably deliver it too if you call exactly. them exactly yeah. um uh, is there a back exit we can just walk yeah. right over here. <laughs> anyway right my bathroom. come to countryside village it's not for your grandma anymore they've stepped up their game <laughs> although our grandma does come and see us sometimes she does walker what? and all i want some awesome what's what's her drink 
Uh, she calls it her grandma vodka tonic, so it's just an ounce instead of the normal ounce oh, and a half quart. All right, cool. Well, thank you again for hosting yeah, us. Uh, we've we've been here at uh, Inkwell with uh, Tyler and John and other patrons at the bar yeah. and uh, talking on uh, Robert, fear. He works with us sometimes. Hey, Robert, yes. what's going on? Yeah. We not, did not have a mic just over a, here. Yeah, yeah, not only just a patron, but uh, yeah. an employee as well. There is a microphone right here no, that we had no, for you. Stay away so. from the microphone. <laughs> it's fine. We don't allow him to talk. You're not that employee. <laughs> yeah. He's not that much of an employee. <laughs> I think I am going to need one of those coffee drinks, though. That yeah, we can do an Irish coffee. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, we've been talking uh, We've been talking on fear. We've been talking on uh, craft Halloween. cocktails, Halloween, and, uh, well. and all that. Inkwell. So thank you for all the people that have been joining with us. Uh, we, uh, I see all the comments, and I know we didn't get all, a lot to the comments, uh, but we will be getting back to those in the next day or so. Yeah. Uh, we just kind of got caught up in the conversation. It so. was fun here. Yeah. I enjoyed it. it, it all I loved. Yeah. Uh, I loved having the cocktails mixed in front of me. That's that's one thing I mm-hmm. really like. That's and why the we sounds. Go to bars. And it's exactly why we go to bars to be served. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And not feared. That's why it's exactly. called hospitality. <laughs> it's very yeah, and not visceral experience. Yes. 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 Well, thank you again, thank uh, you, Tyler and John. And uh, this has been an episode uh, seventy-three of. Drink talk. Join us uh, in, in a, uh, a week or two. Uh, week. We, we got two some weeks. Th- yeah, weeks. well, we got some things in the works. Kind of doing that every other week now. Yeah, we got some things in the works though. Stay we may tuned. have a we have a we may have a one off episode, so we'll see. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Forgot about that. So, all nice. right. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Brian. I'm Britt. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you, guys. John.